it's Teresa here from Rochester and Kent in England. I hope you're all very well and very big welcome to all new subscribers. So be before we begin, I'd just like to say um, a big hello to all our subscribers and anyone really in America at this moment. Uh, we get, we're getting the news about the hurricane on the news and um, it's dreadful and I hope you're all keeping safe. Please all take care and look after yourselves. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate a sample of stitches with the inspiration um, on the screen, all the different flowers, even weeds that are found this time of the year along the hedgerows. Now, I want you to look at the colours, the different colours of the berries and the flowers. So we'll be using those colours. The textures as well, uh, the textures of this thistle or teasel, I should say. Um, the spikiness against the, the smoothness of some of the flower heads. Look at the shapes as well different shapes all sorts of shapes these round shapes of the blackberries against the longer shapes of some of the flowers now i'm not going to keep on talking get your coffee put your feet up and just enjoy the first couple of minutes of this video and hopefully you'll be inspired to try some of these stitches or this idea of making a sampler we have our inspiration now, we're looking at it. We're looking for colours, texture, shape, and we will be using some stitches, maybe new ones, but you'll know most of them. So, having said that, I'll see you just after this video. <laughs> no. I hope you enjoyed that but it finished the same time as I stopped talking so it was hardly worth cozying down was it really but anyway from that that short video I've taken a few ideas I've also taken a few photocopies as well these are just some of them and I'm trying to work out an idea now there's um, two pieces of video which I will keep referring back to and um, I'll bring those up later on as, as we progress. Now what I'm thinking about at the moment is um, it's going to be stitchery, we know that. Maybe some applique and that's as far as I've got. Now I have sorted out some fabric and it's this. This was given to me some time ago. Um, I don't know if it was a student brought it in and said she didn't like it, she'd ordered the wrong colour and everything else. Uh, it's a beautiful oatmeal colour, I know it's dancing on the screen at the moment. The count is quite large, now I've counted the count a couple of times and I keep getting 10 or 11, so either one of those is quite a big count. I don't really imagine myself using it um, for stitchery. So, I think I'm going to use this as the background and it's nice and strong and because this will be a stitchery embroidery um, piece of artwork it will also give me guidelines with the holes I don't want it to turn into counted cross stitch or counted embroidery but I think because this is going to be a sampler of stitches um, you know I really haven't worked this out I can see it in my head but I can't verbalize it so getting back to this I think I might be pleased with some of these stitches some of these sound uh, counter blocks here so that is another reason for using this as a background now I went back and I, as I said I've taken some uh, pictures up uh, photocopies from um, pictures I already had photographs in my own private collection this is one of them um, 
I think the others are behind me. I'm not sure if that is as well. Can't remember. But um, I saw this one on on the film, on one of the little videos that we've just looked at. Now this is lovely. And this was the bit where the roses are trailing over the top of the fence. You can see the fence there. Now I particularly like this for the the natural arrangement of colours. I've just seen, and to see this up close as I did, it's absolutely beautiful. I like the blue sky peeking through here and here. And we have a little bit of a building there. And of course, as I mentioned, the wall. So I'm thinking, yeah, right, this is the top, the sky is there. Now something like this. I'm going to do it in layers or strips from the sky to the grass. Now obviously I'm going to put the grass here. Uh, no, that's a tree, is it? Oh my goodness. So we have the lower pieces of foliage here, down there, going up to the higher teasels here. So I've also got trees here. Now whether I use the trees, I don't know, but I loved this. They're all green. It's all green, but if you look, it's a variety of green. So although the picture is green, we have dark green, light green, yellow green, um, all sorts of greens. Until you look up here, and you can see, I think they're buds. This was taken a while ago, so I think these were buds, red buds, which is the natural com complementary colour to green. So that's given me another idea. Green, um, and you can see the different leaves are making a nice texture. We've got areas of light and dark as well. So this one works well. I do love that one. And of course, we've got the height with that one. This one, now it looks black. These areas look black. They're actually close up, a deep purple. But I still love the dark against the light here. And then we have a collection of red, from deep red to light red and pink over here. And a little bit of brick wall. There's something about that brick wall that is on my mind and I can't quite bring it out at the moment, can't bring that out. And then once again we have these beautiful colours, the purple, and the purple is a natural complementary colour of yellow. Um, green as well, it's just so beautiful. And once again we're back to the greens, different greens again from the blue green to the green here, the yellow green and the pinks. So while I'm talking, I'm actually formulating this in my head a little bit more. So the layers will probably look something like this. Uh, you can't I'm going to put a sky. I'm going to layer it in colours. So we're going to have sky, an area of sky, so just for any pieces of background that poke out. So I'm going to put the sky here. This is very loosely. I'm, do, I'm only doing this loosely. Right, I want the edges there because the edges are sometimes very nice. Then we have areas of grass and plants, bearing in mind some of that. Arranging yellow. that. Now I don't want this piece of work larger than a piece of A4. So what I will do before I decide on fabric placement here is just to give myself a border um, like so. Right, where's my pencil? Right, I've got a yellow pencil here and I will go round all the way round here. Now obviously this won't show so please don't use anything like pen just in case it bleeds. Biro pen, felt pen will possibly bleed, especially if you get it wet. Now 
Oops, come right off there. Lovely. So now I've got the outline around here, which is very difficult to see. You might just, yeah, you can just catch it there, all the way around. So I'm going to sort out some fabric. What I've already done this. See what I've got for a plique. So the next time you see this, this will be in place. I'm going to tuck it down. I might have to machine sew around here to stop it fraying while I'm working it because already that is crinkling up and so is that. And um, Ada does fray really badly. Now I've so. prepared the background. I'm not adding any more. You can see that I've layered some of the net just in some areas to give it a bit more depth, a bit more dimension. Um, black does that lovely. So there is black there, um, dark blue, light blue, black, just black on the background. And down here I've carried the black over the yellow, here and here. For so more. I would start there and bring the roses or flowers along here and work down. But while I was doing this, I thought, no, I'm going to work here so I can gauge the scale and the length of the stems and the plants I put here. Rather than do it the other way around, let this determine the shape at the scale of the roses, the dark bear, blah de blah. I'm going to do it this way, which actually seems to be the logical way to work there and work up. So that is where I am at the moment. I need to sort out the stitches and I'm going to try and now please purist <laughs> don't faint at this. These are all my odds and ends. See, I have a rag bag of scraps and I also have a, well, a bird's nest of ends, short ends, things I've shoved in there. Actually, that, these look like good skeins there. I wonder how I got in there. Is that my little grandson helping me sort these? Oh, bless him. Um, <laughs> it's like I've put up with those. He's put them there, I expect. So I'll take those out before I start and then I'm going to try and use up all these because not to use them is just wasteful. And there's only so many um, little pillows that you can make and paper with these before you think oh, I've had enough of doing that. But I did so think I'd go back to our old book for stitch reference. Oh, I hear you say, oh, it's an old friend, yes. Don't know where the other one is, but stitches. Some of you will remember doing this, whoa, way back in the day now. And this is really a reference, stitch reference. I just flick through it because you will be seeing this again. And if I can find the other one, I like this. That fits in lovely with our garden theme pinwheels um, yeah I can see how these and that I love that that as well so I will be referencing this oh, applique yeah I might be able to use that so you'll be seeing this again so I won't go through it well she says going through it and um, my little book of embroidery stitches in there look Oh, I should say what I want in a minute. I love to doing that, so I will be doing that somewhere else. Ooh, maybe I'll start with that chain stitch and lazy daisy stitch. So I've got something to go on. I'm going to put this away for a little while, get out some books of stitching. But we'll probably base them around our regular stage, uh, stitches, um, basic stitches, and take it from there, okay? Right, I've decided to start with this piece of film. I'll see if I can just play it there. And I like the height here of the roses. So I think I'm going to start with the roses and keep this end here pink and go for the colour and the height. So there's quite a lot of colour 
um, to choose from a variety of pinks I think I'll start at the bottom on the, the brown patch on the fabric and cram as much color in as possible yeah, really. I still, so I'm I going to start that. here with a couple of pinwheels and just uh, see how it goes how it's looking with the pinwheels now the be I reckon they would possibly be about here and we'd have lots of greenery along here so I'm going to start here now bearing in mind that I am working at a different angle it's not the angle that you're looking at I'm working at the side so I'm going to start here I'm not going to put the circles in I'm not drawing those at all these are just going to be as they arrive as they happen because flowers come in all shapes and sizes basically round the, the rose is basically round but not true not geometrically exact so I'm not worried if these shapes are a bit wonky donkey it doesn't matter oh yeah this is nice to do so I'm going to carry on and put pinwheels wherever wherever I feel like it really <laughs> I might change the color I might not now don't forget although I'm going to keep referring to the film that is just my inspiration I'm not going to copy it slavishly I just want to be inspired or influenced by color shape um, texture but not to slavishly copy it for a start I don't think I could if I'm honest um, but I do like the colors yeah. I did and get I carried have... away and um, believe it or not and you probably will believe it because it's a bit messy um, it didn't take very long at all once I sat down and started concentrating and listening to some music before I knew it I had actually done this and just a couple of hours and it's just so satisfying and really mindful as well now I'm going to start over here this end and I have a little list here of the stitches that I've used so I don't forget them now apart from the old favorites the feather stitch French knots um, chain yeah single chain stitches there um, I've introduced some new ones new to us as also nappers now if I start here now you saw me demonstrate this and some of these I will demonstrate but I don't think I'll demonstrate them all and now excuse the pronunciation take the buff now I believe that's French for head of beef and if you look closely at this it's a single chain stitch with like a loop going through it and it gives the impression of a head um, buffalo's head or, or a bull's head with horns and I just think that is really lovely so that's um, I'm going to call it wheat ear stitch because we also it's also known as a wheat ear stitch I actually know this as wheat ear stitch and I've always enjoyed doing this um, on my own work uh, I just think it's lovely so that as I said runs up there we have single fly stitch here French knots here and a trusted feather stitch this that resembles a canvas Algerian eye is just straight stitches going into our common center um, what do we have over here we've got a woven spider stitch here and that reminds me very much like the pinwheel um, I will demonstrate that up here Ooh, up here um, so yeah you see how that's done and that is really really easy once again straight stitch with French knot on the end here we have with well, a lazy daisy which is over here as well 
What else have we got? Um, oh, this is a beautiful little stitch as well. And that is just a single eye, uh, sorry, a single chain stitch with a tail. And let me say, it's called a long tailed chain or daisy stitch. And I've just put a straight stitch in the centre. So you can add bits to your stitches as you like. You don't have to be a purist and just stick to how the stitches are traditionally work, which really I've never done. I don't think I've ever done. Um, there's always been maybe a little twist to it. I've added some Can greenery along here. They're just um, individual fly stitches along here, um, here and between the French knots here. Now at the moment I'm just going to finish off this section uh, with a little group of individual chain stitches. So a group of three, if I hold that up you might be able to see, a group of three just to give the impression of drooping flowers and all I'm doing is just the three chain stitches that goes back into the same central hole am I on the screen right there I am yeah so it's the first one here and it, it's quite a nice effect almost a snowdrop effect perhaps that's what I'm thinking of while I'm doing it little snowdrops there flowers the problem is doing this um, it's hard to know when to stop see I have a group there of four I think I might uneven it a bit and put one maybe up here um, I'm trying to imagine it with the stems here no I think I'll leave that um, I'm wondering if I need to put one somewhere else so I finish off at the back here and I might just finish that little piece of thread I have here and bring this colour over to maybe here, there even no I'm going to put it there hopefully I'll have enough thread so not in the back as usual and I'll have one here so a little small one that's going into the flower. So there's one that's not quite straight but it doesn't have to be. So I'm going to refer back to the little bit of video with the flowers and the wall maybe. I'll have a look and take a little bit of inspiration from that to there. And then I looked over here and I thought it needs something else. So I'm just going to tip the ends of these lazy daisy petals the chain single chain stitches just going to mark them just a little bit to give them a little bit more definition so they don't fall into the background and I think the dark green might just do that nicely let me have a look there you can see I started off with this orange one here Oops. The orange one there, I've gone, already gone round the edge there and there and I think it just makes it stand out a bit more. So I'm going to go through and pick out some other flowers and maybe do that with some others. Just add a tiny bit of dark green around the edges. Um, these are very plain, the pinwheels are plain so they do need something but I'm not sure what they need at the moment. Um, looking back at the, the video, the inspiration, I think I'm going to put some glass beads, some small seed beads on some of these because um, it was a rainy day when I took that video and some of the raindrops have come out really lovely on some of the rose petals. So um, I'm going to do that as well. So, I will... so I've just about finished this now. This is the last line of running stitch I'm going to do. I've used three strands or and also six strands um, in the running stitch to give it a little bit of texture and I've used dark brown 
and dark blue thread I think there's also a light brown there as well so that's all I'm going to do for the running stitch or the slow stitch whatever you prefer right let's just have a look right so that's as far as I am at the moment with that I quite like that effect there now bearing in mind it isn't finished there will still be additions to this and to this I started sewing some of the gaps that were here in light green if you can see the light green thread here I've used fly stitch here and there there oh, I've, it's all fly stitch actually I thought I might have used some feather stitch but I haven't so I think I might fill in most of the background I'm not sure yet I'm now going to start this piece here by putting in I think I'm going to put in a wall some railings along here just to break it all up so I can get another lot of flowers over the wall so I'm thinking about railings or maybe brick or brick wall as in the video but I need to think about that but I'll make a start and as soon as I do get some of it done I'll get back and show you how I'm doing went back to the video and found the piece with the wall got a piece of wool this side a wall piece of wool that side and some wrought iron here so I had a think and then I've looked through some pictures that I have in an old scrap box and I found this this picture here now I like this bit this bit here and this bit here so I photocopied two of these off I think they're by Pixel free pictures by Pixel and I think now I just did this rough this really rough sketch of where round about where these are go so you can you can see here I've got the two brick ends there and there and the wrought iron in between and that is how I'm thinking of placing them so I have one there and one there right. I have finished this side of the wall and I'm quite pleased with how that's looking it's like that but I've put the bricks or the stonework this way so I've got the long bricks coming along this way instead of as it is actually on the wall like that and I'm pleased with how it is it's all raised chain band different sizes to represent the rustic quality of this and I hope it's captured on the screen a um, bit higgledy piggledy but then sews so this wall um so what how far did I get yeah raised chain band in all these little blocks that you can see and in between it's chain stitch chain stitch all here um, to represent the mortar there we go and single chains here and here wherever you see a little line like this that's actually a single chain it's a block of chain there and here now at this point I'm not sure whether I'm going to take it any further down or here so I'm just going to leave that I'm going to say that is finished unless I change my mind about there but I'm tempted at the moment to put a flower there so that's that one now how I started that I did get carried away six strands of thread and I believe there are three shades of brown here uh, yes I can see one two and three three shades of brown and a nice beige color in between and all I did was to start this off was fold this up this was the size I wanted if you remember I placed it down and I've tacked along here 
there you can see the tacking stitches there and I've just marked it with a fabric pencil along there okay and then I've started my raised chain band just a little way from the edge <coughs> excuse me now I'm using a really nice needle it's quite a thick needle actually but it does go through the fabric and it's got a lovely point it's a pointed end here so it just slips in and out and I'm doing the raised chain band um, let me see where's the edge yeah I'm doing the raised chain band along here from there to the edge now I'll tell you what I'll do I'll make this bigger you don't want my chest in the frame either <laughs> oh how awful <laughs> right <laughs> so and it doesn't matter how wide you make these they could all be different all these could be different widths just going along like this as on the demonstration and I'm not paying any attention to how this face some of them are closer than others and it's just creating a nice nice effect I think that suits this project um, I'm not saying it would suit a project on fine linen or anything like that any um, anything where the stitching has to be accurate but for our textile art hey ho we make our rules no right no wrong so there we are now I've worked how many bars is that two four five bars and they're quite widely spaced now some of them on the other side are actually side by side so I know you've seen the demonstration one but this is the sort of stitch that sometimes you just need to keep practicing or keep looking at so here we go start it there and uh, bring the thread down across and there we are it just it is just really so simple um, I told a story in one of the videos that um, I avoided this stitch for all the time I was studying art at university textile art history of art um, I, I avoided this because I had to do it um, for my A level course and um, it frightened the life out of me like some people fear French knots I fear this it's such a pretty stitch but I just couldn't do it I, I just could not do it and it it's taken me years and years and years to pluck up the courage to ever go and um, once I discovered that I could do it I just couldn't stop doing it uh, it's just lovely so there we are and how long did that take not long at all there are and just finish that off at the back and these are how I've done the blocks this side okay now some of these legs are showing on here here the cross but that doesn't matter because because the chain stitch or the mortar will cover those up or I could weave through them okay so I'm going to carry on and I just the way I've been doing this is just dotting them about wherever I felt like it I haven't worked in any particular sequence so I just do start again here with might do a longer one I might do a shorter one so the two brick walls are finished now they've both been worked exactly the same in the same stitches now the next thing I'm going to do is think about uh, flower placement on the top over here and here so I have actually found this just this tiny piece of fabric I'm not sure which is the right side and which is the wrong but I'm going for this side it's really nice and it's a bit fluffy there 
I thought I might try to use this some way maybe cut around the shapes and have them um, perhaps cascading down looking at the screen I quite like that effect maybe the flowers there um, and as I said cascading over here I need to look back at the the film at the clip to see how it looked when I saw it but that does look quite nice the next thing I did is cut around some of these shapes um, it was a middle band so I've just cut the edges off and I think that looks really nice it looks a lot nicer than the straight edges just going to pin that down so I can tack it um, sorry just going to put a few pins in here so um, it's ready for sewing that's it I don't think I need any more pins than that now with a big sewing needle it's my favorite one my long one nice po pointed tip you can see how sharp that is big eye on there and six strands of green thread I'm going to just pin this in uh, sorry I'm just going to secure this in place all the way around these flower shapes with a very very small um, running stitch and the darkness of the green should highlight these dark areas here and um, maybe make a little bit of a focal point I hope I'm just finishing off the very last flower here and then it'd be time to sit back a little while and have a look to see how it's looking now, I've had a thought as well while I've been doing this um, I'm looking at some lace I think I showed it to you in a previous um, section I had some white lace here with small flowers um, beaded flowers which I didn't think I could use but I'm not so sure now now this is done and there we are that that section there is now let me straighten that up right there we go don't we calm my camera's playing up a little bit I'm afraid so I hope you can see that okay so the, getting back to the flowers I have found flowers on here you see this very very pretty I might just be able to use some of these so I've only cut out a few actually five and I thought I might dot them around I'm going to see what it looks like on the on the screen I might just play about and see if yeah I think that's might maybe what it needs to break up all the the heavy rich pink here yeah I think I need to spend some time breaking that pink up but I think it's worked really well start thinking about embellishing because this isn't finished it needs to be embellished with some beads uh, maybe some more French knots just a little bit of something and we all know what that is a bit blingy just to give it a bit of oomph okay and then we have this big piece here now the photograph or the piece of video shows the cathedral in the background part of the building I'm not sure that I need that but maybe something here maybe a roof with more flowers so that is something that's going to develop as I finish this um, so I'm not too sure about what's coming next I'll obviously go back to the inspiration and see even if I make a composite of bits and pieces um, so um, yeah it's quite, it's really interesting it's quite enjoyable These, I like this as well so I'm wondering if I should make a feature of this lovely curved line with either more flowers like here curve them round or 
with some trees. Now these are beautiful, different, lots of different greens going on there. Um, the amount of time I've taken working this, just a week maybe, the trees have actually changed colour completely. <laughs> these are all dead. Hope to say these are all past. Um, and now these are all orange and golden colours and red. Beautiful. So I think for the time being I'm going to concentrate on this little area here. Maybe with the trees. Put some trees there. Um, I think I'll probably do a little bit of cutting out just to see what it might look like it could possibly look like if I very very roughly take this shape because this has got the trees in it the dark trees you see the lovely shapes there so I'm wondering if I could put the trees there I want that shape there somewhere along there or this one I do like that one I think it could possibly be this one yep there's actually that sort of shape there turn it upside down oh gosh look at that yeah so I have a feeling it might be that running along that shape maybe and then possibly extending these with hand stitchery above there Let's have a look how that might pan out. So just watch this space. I'm not sure what I'm doing. Um, so I don't expect you to be. But we're just, we're just play it by ear. So I did make a start up here. I've added feather stitch and chin stitch. And some stem stitch somewhere here. I think and somewhere else and some running stitch I've tried to crowd it here with as much green and brown as I can to give this dark this dark effect here and little bits of green and brown there's quite a lot of colors going on there but I have just used green and brown two greens a light green here if you can if the camera's picking that up and a dark green now the flowers there's enough going on here and there not to have great big flowers so i've stuck to very small flowers here the straight stitch or what would be called algerian eye similar to the ones i did down here very quick and easy to do i've just kept to pink and, and lilac or a light purple and brought in the yellow stars here from down here just to make a bit of a pleasing composition so that the lemon or the yellow runs straight up from top down to bottom next I've moved on to the sky I'll just bring that down slightly there we go and all this is running stitch following this curve here I started off there and then I've just followed that and it's actually come out really nice around here because it's followed this curve around there now at the moment um, I can't think it, whether it needs anything else at all I spent some time adding more French knots around here filling in some of the little gaps here with French knots uh, where did I go I put some around here the little bits of leftover purple from up here I brought down here added a couple of uh, cross stitch there a few pinks around there um, and that is is it really I need to secure the tops here I've just realized I've only secured <laughs> the top bit of the top of the wall post there so that needs to be done next um, and then I will start filling in detailing some of these flowers and I know exactly how I'm going to do that I'm going to do that with some sequins 
So I've threaded up my needle already. I'll just do one or two here. So I'm going to go right through the centre of this flower. So I'll start with this flower right through the centre and I'm going to go through the centre a couple of times just to lock the thread to make sure that it's quite tight and secure and won't pull through. So that's lovely. And I'm going to be brave and use these colours. I don't use these very often. I have a whole lot here. Um, I don't use them very often because they are very, very, very bright, very in your face. And a few goes a long, long way. So what size? Right, okay. I'm going to go for the small ones. These little small ones. Where are they? Oh, I think I've got my wrong glasses on. <laughs> I've got my wrong fingers on too. <laughs> I have no problems picking them up. Right, let's go. <laughs> go for that one. Oh, I might have to clip this, shorten this bit. <laughs> right, so I eventually I managed to pick one out. Push that down there. Got two rogue ones there, trying to escape. So right in the centre there, I'm just going to go over one side and back to the centre. So that's one side, pick up a little bit of fabric, back to the centre and across to the other side. You could make a feature of it if you wanted to. So that one is good enough. Now I'm going to carry on and do this on quite a few of these I think to give it the, the bump that I wanted. I might even introduce beads as well. So it's almost finished. Um, I'm anxious to, to finish this, to start another project, uh, well, which I'm actually working on at the moment. But as you know, with a wedding, life is pretty hectic here. So um, it's just a matter of squeezing it all in. But anyway, I will carry on there. And as you can see, I haven't, I am finishing these off individually because I really don't want to go from one to the other in case I catch this thread. All right, so I'll carry on and hopefully when you see it next time, it will be finished. Well, I'm going to call it finished now. Uh, it's taken a couple of hours just to tidy it up and finish off. What I'll do is I'll just run through this very briefly and tell you how I've updated it. Although you probably can see, I've dotted the flowers with little beads. I've also added some little uh, clusters of sequins that I found. We've used these before, so you'll probably recognize them. Finish off the wall here with a little bit of plant growth. Here I've added some more white flowers. Um, so it looks as if they're actually cascading down the wall. Um, what else have I done? Oh, I've been working on this for so long now that um, I probably can't see the wood for the trees. Or is it the other way around? But anyway, I've added just a couple of little clusters of sequins here just to break up this. Now, I purposely haven't added any top stitchery here or any surface stitchery apart from the running stitch to hold them down because I think that area is fussy enough. I don't think it needs anything else. And also, the texture is quite a nice, plain, soft, flat texture, which complements or contrasts one of our words against all this raised texture because this is really textured. So, we're down as far as there. What else have I done? Oh, I don't think I've done much more down here. Just this piece at the bottom, I've added some applique. 
can see these bits here it did look very plain there so I've added some applique and on my desk I have all sorts of bits and pieces I can't show you my desk but <laughs> on my table it's such a mess but do you remember me telling you once my art lecturer at uni said I was the bane of her life that I'd take three three tables to everybody else's one well I've got one big table here piled up with enough for three tables and um, I'm totally ashamed but hopefully sooner or later I will get into my little workshop in the garden and start coming from there but anyway back to these you might remember a project some time ago where I cut out bits like this and back to them there's all sorts of bits here so these are the leaves and the stems from the flower heads that I used previously so this is now finished um, I like it I, I do like this I don't know what I'm going to do but whether it to put it in a frame or to actually bring it out at a later date and um, maybe use it for something else yeah, I'm looking at it now thinking do you know I could have added so much more between here but once again it's knowing when to stop um, knowing when not to egg the pudding so, so to speak or over egg it I should say um, yeah I'm lost in this at the moment I'm looking at the screen and on the screen I can sometimes see it better what it needs than looking close up yeah, I deliberately left this piece up here as well, plain. I'm not really sure why. I wonder if I should... Well, I'm not going to do it now, but I'm wondering if, in retrospect, I should have maybe added something there. But hey-ho, I haven't done that. Maybe that will uh, be for another time when I make this up into something okay so i do hope you like it it's a bit of a different sampler and we have used many many stitches on here now i'm not going to list them all because it would take till christmas which isn't that far away actually is it you start waffling um if you haven't subscribed please think about subscribing and thank you for getting to the end of this all those who have got to the end well done <laughs> see you shortly